Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. In previous videos, I've shown off this um, CH341A mini programmer for reprogramming BIOS chips on laptops or desktop computers. And my one here has got the volt mod on it because the principal problem with this guy is by default, it puts five volts onto the data lines to the chip, which is super bad and can and does destroy some BIOS chips. So if you're using one of these, you've got to do that volt mod. Otherwise, you're asking for trouble. You might get away with it 10 times. You might get away with it 100 times, but you, you will probably get caught out at some point. So be aware of that. So the volt mod I did basically converts this. So the um, CH341A chip here runs on the 3 volt rail instead of the 5 volt rail, thus dropping the data lines down to 3 volts. And uh, I did it by running these jumper wires. There are other ways of doing it that people also discussed in the comments. As long as you do some kind of mod, that's what's important. However, also what came up not long after I worked on this was the existence of this guy, a version 1.6 of the mini programmer, uh, which is interesting because it has a volt select switch on it, which I find very interesting indeed because it potentially means that A, we've got the same super cheap programmer, that doesn't require 1.8 volt adapters such as this guy here. So this is a 1.8 volt adapter. You plug it into the programmer like so. And uh, this chip drops everything down to 1.8 volts. It's also worth noting that if you have not volt modded your CH341A, this will bring that 5 volt data line, those 5 volt data lines down to 1.8 volts as well. I have tested that. So if you're only working on 1.8 volt chips, you can just use one of these. However, you will find yourself using a mixture of 1.8 and 3 volt chips when you do this kind of thing. So anyway, so let's take a look at this thing. And uh, what we're going to do, we're going to do a, I, I'd call this a mini review. I don't do a huge amount of BIOS programming. I'm not a uh, an authority in this. But I thought I'd take a look at one because hopefully if this really does what it says on the tin, then this truly is the poor man's this, you know, the poor man's easy access to um, uh, to BIOS programming. Because I mean, you can see it's a bit jank. However, it's cheap like the budgie. I think I paid something like six or seven dollars for this on AliExpress. And this is what came in the bag. This is the first time I've opened it up. So pretty damn cheap. Um, so some notes, it has the same CH341A chip on the bottom. Uh, it has a couple of jumpers along here that go to various pinouts. And also this jumper that comes pre-fitted, uh, this selects whether the chip is in serial interface mode or programming mode. So when the jumper is engaged, it's in programming mode, which is how we want to use it. Uh, if you removed that jumper, this would basically become a spy bus, uh, an SPI bus or various other serial buses. Not an expert. It does serial interface stuff. So in the accessories, we've got quite a lot of different breakout boards here. It looks like all the usual ones that I would expect to need are here, which is very nice. I didn't order any extras with this. This is just what mine came with. So we've got this strip of, um, uh, of DIN pins. Um, and what we do is we break these off in groups of four and we solder them into the bottom of these like so. And then that creates something that looks like one of these. So here's another one that I use. We've got the four pins on the bottom. And then what you do is you drop this into the programmer like so. And that allows us to get put um, surface mount chips into the socket. Um, then it's also come with a, uh, a dip, so dual inline package um, adapter here. Not really necessary because if you've got a dip chip, you can literally just drop that straight into the reader anyway. Um, however, if you want to, I'm sure there's people who need them. We can solder that into there. Uh, we can stick our pins on the bottom and then we've got a dip adapter, which well, it goes that way around, but whatever. So um, uh, we've got the dip adapter there. Um, we've got, uh, I don't want to give the names of all of these because I'm honestly not sure if they're correct or not. But as you can see, we've got uh, various sized SMD ones. So that's quite a small one. Um, QFN8, um, that looks like a very common size to me. Um, then we've got SOP8, yeah, so SOP8, that is practical for most of the desktop style chips. 
and then we've got some BGA stuff here as well. Um, so again, only you will know what you need, but um, probably I think these two are covering most of the suspects, um, so far as I can tell, or these three, whatever. Uh, they're all there. So looking on the back of it, obviously the party piece of this is this voltage selector switch, and it's got a couple of different settings. It's got 5 volt, 3.3, 2.5, and 1.8. So there's actually quite a lot of st stages for that. So we're on 1.8. So there's 2.5, 3.3, and then 5 volts. So uh, what I'll do is I'll um, I'll switch this thing on now, and we'll just plug in, uh, we'll just stick in a multimeter and verify that those do what they say they do. So let's grab the multimeter. Right, so we've got this guy plugged in, and let's start off just by probing the uh, VCC pin. So I'm going to go to ground and VCC. And we're at 5 volts, which is normal. So now let's switch down to 3.3. There's 3.3. 2.5. 2.5. And 1.8. 1.8. Cool, so far so good. So now the acid test is the data lines. 1.8. 1.8. Three point three and five, and the data lines are pulled to the correct voltage as well. Perfect. So that is confirmed. The um, the version one point six does indeed have fixed voltage rails and a voltage selector switch, which is hecking awesome. So hardware wise, no complaints really. Um, you know, uh, obviously we haven't gone into the details of. Um, how much uh, how much grunt this thing has if you want to do in circuit flashing and stuff like that but honestly I'm not really qualified to talk about that all of my programming experience is all um, chip off board programming um, at some point I will explore in circuit programming but I'm not ready to do that yet because chip off board works for me um, so this looks pretty good but first we need something to program. So I'm going to go grab a chip that we can do some reading and writing to, and we can just do a couple of dumps and a couple of programs. So the chip I'm going to be working with today is on this MacBook Air motherboard, or logic board rather, and it's a Winbond 25Q64FVIQ. So I'm going to hot air off this off the board, then I'm going to assemble it onto one of the SMD adapters so we can drop it directly into the programmer. So let's apply some flux and get to heating. This QFN8 adapter is the nearest thing we've got to a WSON8 adapter. However, as you can see, it's missing the center ground pad, which is fine, we don't need that, but we need to watch out for those long pads, which might touch the center pad on the chip and short the chip out. So uh, this is close enough, we can use this, you just need to be a little bit careful with it. A more ideal thing would be an actual WSON8 adapter, like this one, which as you can see has shorter pads and a center ground pad. So this one is more reliable, but I'm gonna assemble and use this one because I wanna use all the bits that came with the kit for this review. So I'll take, I'll break out two groups of four on these legs here and solder those to the bottom.
Now to run the programmer, we're going to use some software called Neo Programmer, which is the renamed version of AS Programmer. Uh, in the previous CH341A video, um, we were talking about that, and I was having trouble finding good download links for it. Now they've renamed it to Neo Programmer, and I found a good website called Carndish Network, who seem to have pretty good version histories of it, and a pretty solid looking download link. So I'll put a link to that in the description down below. Now when you unzip that file for Neo Programmer, you'll see we've got a drivers folder here, which contains the drivers for the CH341A. And you can install that using the setup.exe, or you can use Device Manager to manually sideload the driver. So once you've done that, your programmer is ready to go, and we can start up neoprogrammer.exe, and we have an interface. As a reminder, our chip is a Winbond 25Q64FV. So in Neo Programmer, we can go to the IC menu, search, and type in W25Q64FV. And there is our 3.3 volt chip. And the nice thing now is that they've put in a load of information that tells you uh, the basic headline stats for that chip you're programming. So we can see straight away from the database here that it's a 3.3 volt chip. So that saves me the hassle. We can also validate this information by looking up the data sheet or the schematic for the laptop. Or you can also just measure using your multimeter. Even with the chip removed, just switch on the laptop and just measure the VCC pin for the chip. And you can also find out there as well. So we'll select that. And now our software is ready to go. We'll insert the chip into the programmer. So as you can see from the silk screen here, 25 series SPI ROMs go on the left nearest the USB port. And you can see that there is a little half moon indicator and a dot there. It's not very clear, but it is there, trust me. And that indicates that this is pin one. So with my breakout board here, once again, we have the half moon, which indicates that this is pin one. So we'll align that in there and just lock the lever in place. We've also ensured that our voltage selector switch is in the 3.3 volt position. So notch number two there. And now we're ready to take a read. So let's just hit the read IC button. And off it goes. Now it's worth noting, I haven't spent a huge amount of time in Neo Programmer yet. Um, previously, I've been using an older version of AS Programmer that felt pretty basic compared to my daily driver of my RT809F. However, uh, Neo Programmer 2.2 already has got a lot of really nice quality of life features in it that I'm quite enjoying. I don't know how well this programmer deals with things like loose pin connections or uh, reading cap files. Um, that is one of the things that the RT809F is very good at. However, um, the RT809F is a completely different class of programmer. So this is not a versus review. I'm just commenting that different programmers and different software have different strengths and weaknesses, which is why, regardless of everything, I strongly recommend having more than one programmer in your arsenal, because if one of your programmers won't read a chip, the chances are the other one will, and vice versa. And I've actually found that in experience as well. Right, our chip has read, uh, so we now have a buffer full of data from the chip. So I'm going to save that. And I'm going to put that in a folder, and I'm just going to call that dump.bin. And now we have a backup of our BIOS file. So now what I'm going to do, the reason why I'm working on this chip is I'm removing a firmware password from this MacBook Air. So I'm going to go ahead and modify this BIOS. And I'm not going to go into the details of what I'm doing there because it's not relevant to this video. I have other videos on unlocking MacBook Airs, and I have future videos planned where I go into more detail on better methods that I've found because I've been refining my uh, BIOS programming skills over time and I've got stuff that I want to share with you. So stay subscribed to find out more about that in future videos. However, for now, uh, let's just jump forward to my modified ROM. So I'll go ahead and open my unlocked ROM file now. So we've loaded a new file, dump underscore unlocked dot bin. 
And now we're going to write this back to the chip. So from the program IC menu, I'm going to select the drop down and we're going to make sure that we select all of the functions here. So we want to make sure that the chip is not right protected. We want to erase it first. We want to check that it's erased and then we're going to write and verify. Now it's really important to go through all of these steps uh, because especially the erase and blank check, nine times out of 10 when you have a bad flash, it's probably because the chip did not erase properly first and that can give you programming issues. And then if you've got a bad flash on your chip, you put the chip back on the board, then the laptop doesn't post and you're not sure if it's a bad solder join or you knot something loose or you've got a bad ROM and it's just horrifying. So make sure you go through all of the steps to uh, help ensure the highest possible success rate on your flash. So that is ready. Let's hit program IC. IC will be erased and programmed. Yes. And off we go. Also a friendly reminder to make sure you retain a backup of your original dump file just so if everything goes sideways you can restore it to exactly as it was before you started messing with it. Operation success and it took it about two minutes to do it. So now our chip is programmed we can now drop that out the programmer. I can desolder this from the adapter and put it back onto the laptop from whence it came. So there's a rundown and demonstration of the CH341A version 1.6. Um, so all in all, uh, this has grown up now. Um, the main primary issues with the original model are fixed. Uh, and it's fixed in spades as well, because not only does it not have the original overvoltage problem that the first version had, but they've also fixed that and put in that voltage selector switch, which is a really cool party piece that a lot of other programmers do not have, uh, even far, vastly more expensive ones. It's so cheap that it's just a complete no-brainer to buy one of these on AliExpress. I'll have a link in the description below for an affiliate link where you can buy one of these. And if you buy it through that link, I get a small kickback. So if you want to use that, feel free to. Or if you find one cheaper elsewhere, feel free to take that one as well. If you're a repair shop or a hobbyist, I would definitely recommend one of these because of how inexpensive they are. Even if you already own another programmer, I would pick one of these up just as a spare because you might find that it can do something that your main programmer can't or you can just use it as a backup. Uh, my only complaint with this is the original one, I think, I think everyone would agree that this one looks a lot more stylish. This one looks like a much more legit thing. I feel like, I don't know if these were designed by the same people or not, but the original one had a lot of flair to it. Um, it's much better presented. Like the black PCB is neither here nor there, but with the gold uh, trim around the outside that you can grab hold of it, it's slightly bigger. So, you know, it's easier to plug it in and unplug it. It's not as cramped. It's a simpler layout and it had like the extra pads on the bottom of it. So in a pinch, you could just solder directly on there stuff like that. I really liked the design of this programmer. Whereas this one, although they've put on the IR blaster and the voltage selector switch, the whole thing is not as visually nice. Uh, it's a lot more function over form. Now, I understand that we don't need this thing to look pretty, but all the same, it's kind of a shame that it didn't have that really nice look to it um, that made this one just uh, a, a good looking tool, if you see what I mean. So even though it's kind of raw and unrefined, uh, the functionality is spot on with this guy. And again, with Neo Programmer being as refined as it is now, I think this is a really solid starter point for anyone who is doing BIOS programming for modern laptop repair, or even old laptop repair for that matter. So uh, in any case, thank you very much for watching, everyone. Thank you for my supporters, and all of my links are down in the description as well. Uh, affiliate link for this, my Twitter, Discord, Patreon, all that good stuff. Thank you very much and I shall see you in the next video. Bye for now.